Right, well, hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you all so much for the response to my first video. I never thought I'd get as many likes and comments straight out of the block. Um, and it's lovely to see so many of you being so welcoming with me. So thank you very much for that. Um, as you can see, I'm feeling a bit festive today. It's less, less than two weeks till Christmas now, so I'm having to be a bit festive and get myself into the mood. But look, Snowman t-shirt, can't go wrong. Anyway, I'm back today, like I said I would be, with a review of this. Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. Um, it's what I've been looking at reading for a while, I've been talking about people for a while, and I thought it'd be finally time I got round to doing a review. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about how I'm going to do my reviews. Everyone's got a slightly different style. I just want to set out how mine's going to go from the very start. Um, I've given myself four topics, four areas to judge it on. So it's going to be the concept, so how good's the idea, how good's the setting, how good's the... Things as simple as how good's the blurb. We've got plot, so that's going to be setting, the story, the twists and turns. A big thing that'll be part of this is the ending. Um, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers as much as possible. But obviously if there's a point when it's really important, I mention a spoiler, I'm not going to shy away from it, but I will give warning in advance. But... I will talk about endings quite a lot because that's quite a big part of any book for me. So that's going to come under plot. Characters. So any good book isn't a good book unless it's got good characters. And that's something that I'm going to really look at for quite a long time in each of my um, reviews will be the characters in the books. And this is a great example to start that off. And then the last one will be writing. So how good is the writing style? I'm not going to go into big English literature A-level style depth, but I'll talk a bit about just how I found it reading it, whether I found it easy or difficult, whether I liked some of the words and the sentences used, or whether it was just a bit too simple or boring or complicated. Once I've done all that, I'm going to end up with a score out of 10. I will go into 7.5, 8.5, 9.5 style territory, but out of 10 is what I'm going to go with because I think it gives me more scope for review, and it's what I've used in other things like my blog as well in the past. So, it's The Matrix by Jessie Burton. She's the debut author this year. It's her first book written. Um, and it was, like I've said before, it was subject of a massive bidding war last year between publishers. And it's been given a massive push since it was released. It's the Waterstones Book of the Year. It's got loads of um, award nominations and those kinds of things. So I thought, right, I needed to read it. So the basic concept is the main character, Nella. It marries a rich husband in 17th century Amsterdam and arrives on his doorstep and instead is greeted by his sister Marin who's quite cold-hearted and secretive, the maid Cornelia and their servant Otto. And as a wedding present she gets given a miniature of their house, it looks a bit like the house on the cover and each week the miniature will send her a little item to, or two to go into the house. But as a basic concept it's interesting because I've not heard anything along these lines. I love the concept of having this miniature house that links up and relates to the main house. I think it's a really cool idea and I think it works really well as a concept for a book and the setting as well. I mean 17th century Amsterdam's a pretty, pretty damn cool place to set it. So from the outside, from the cover, from the blurb and the general gist of the book, it sounds like it's going to be brilliant. So what's it like when you actually get into the book? All in all, I was impressed by the plot. Um, I did not expect many of the themes that it was about to be in there. So it covers things such as race, gender, attitudes to wealth and poverty and servitude. It covers so many different areas that you wouldn't necessarily expect to start with. It's got the romance aspect, it's got aspects of mystery, it's got aspects of historical fiction. It's got a bit of everything in there and it's brilliant how it all links it together. It's not difficult but it's well linked together and it makes a very interesting read. A few of the twists and turns I guessed, but for the most part they were good and quite unexpected and really kept you interested in the book. The one thing which let it down mainly for me was the ending. Most of the main plot strands were resolved, mostly well, sometimes a bit disappointingly, but the biggest problem for me was that there were three or four major plot strands that just weren't dealt with and I mean, I know it's probably open to the sequel, but as a whole, I'm reviewing this one book and it felt unfinished with the ending, which is always a shame. And as I said, the ending's a big deal for me, so that let it down. The other thing that was mixed was the setting. 
Didn't take advantage of where it was set, I don't think, for the most part. You don't get much of a description of Amsterdam in this period. You can imagine it to be extremely evocative and most of her writing style is. It's just not about this setting. It felt like a real missed opportunity. The other hand, the house she lives in, is so well drawn, it's unreal. Um, you almost, you literally feel like you could be in the house, that you know all the characters and the house and the atmosphere so well from the description that you may as well be there. And that's an incredible, incredible skill to have, especially for a debut author. So overall, for the plot, it was mixed, interesting, good twists, if some of it predictable. Ending was disappointing, but the way that she characterised the house as a setting was incredible. Characters, again, is another one of the most important parts of any book. And again, in this, it's quite a mixed bag. So the main character, Nella, is just a bit boring. One of the good things I liked was that she does develop throughout the book. So by the end, she's a very different character, much more interesting character than she is to start with. But to start with, she's just, there's nothing to her. She's mainly there as a pair of eyes to show you the other events unfolding, rather than to have an opinion and be a character and do anything that it seems. And that's always a shame for the protagonist. But, as I said, she does grow through the book and that helps. Her husband, Johannes, has quite a pivotal role in the book, but actually isn't in it much. It's a very, very strange way of doing it, but it works. It just means that his character is left quite undeveloped and unfinished. And again, it was disappointing to not see him have a more well-rounded, significant character to go alongside his role in the book. On the other hand, I absolutely loved the character of Marin, the cold-hearted sister. She's that traditional, secretive, cold-hearted, hard-faced, not particularly warm character. But throughout the book, her journey and the things that happened to her and the story and her feelings are what I was most interested in throughout the whole book. It was her story I cared about, it was how things affected her I cared about. And I think she's one of the best characters I've read in fiction this year probably without much difficulty. So I have to say, big, big love for Marin. And the other one is the maid, Cornelia. She's exactly the kind of person I would want to be friends with. She's a bit chatty, she's a bit gossipy, she's always open. She just seems like a genuinely nice person. And I think she offers quite a nice balance to the cold, secretive, mysterious rest of the characters in that she is so open. So all in all, I think the bunch balances out quite nicely. I just wish that the main character, Nella, and her husband had been a bit more interesting. Even the supporting cast, quite often, are more interesting than they are. And that's a shame, but all in all, not done a bad job with the characters. So the Ryan style, overall, I found quite easy. Um, the first 30, 40 pages I struggled with, I'll be honest. It was taking me a bit of getting used to and I was getting distracted and I wasn't focusing on the characters and the feelings and what was happening because I was having to concentrate on what the writing style was doing. So it did detract for the first bit, but after the first 30, 40 pages, I loved it. There were quite a lot of nice little similes and metaphors and really nice representations of different feelings of characters through other people. So there's one bit where they talk about a character of Billy who's blind but is skating on ice better than any of the other kids and it's such a nice metaphor for how Nella is in that position in Amsterdam. But this character of Billy is created solely for these two paragraphs he's mentioned in but he's so well defined and he does such a good role in what he's meant to be doing that I think it's those other little literary touches that really, really make the writing style out to be so beautiful. I've only really got one other thing I want to mention, and that's the possibility of a sequel. So, as I've possibly mentioned before, I've got a signed copy of the book from when the author came to visit my store in Leeds. That's fantastic. But during the evening, the author was given a talk and revealed that she's currently writing a sequel to this. I really don't want a sequel to this book. As I said, it feels a bit unfinished, but it doesn't feel like there's enough scope for a whole other book. It's quite a nice whole as it is. Most of the character stories are resolved and completed, and I'm happy to leave it here. And that's rare for me in a book for me to say, that's enough, don't write any more. But I feel in this case it's one of them, and I don't want it to be tarnished by a sequel that's money-grabbing as opposed to 
a continuation of the story. So I'll, I'll give Jesse the benefit of the doubt to see where it goes, but I am hesitant about a sequel, and I just hope it doesn't ruin anything about this one in the future. Okay, so that leaves me with my overall thoughts on The Miniaturist. All in all, I'm very glad I got round to reading this book. It's one I've looked at for a while, and it's one I've really enjoyed reading. The plot is very interesting. It's quite different to anything else I've read, at least for quite a while. It's a really good concept, and she builds on it well, even if she could use things such as the setting of Amsterdam and some of the characters a little bit better than she does. All in all, I enjoyed the journeys of the characters, especially Marin, and the more serious sides of Cornelia that come out, and the development of Mela into a much more interesting character than she starts as. So all in all, it all works for me. The writing style was good. It was all just let down a bit by the ending, and some of the weaker characters, and when the ending and the characters that were less well defined were the main aspect of the book, that's a little bit of a letdown, and it does tar it a little bit for me. But, all in all, a very good read. I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10, and I'd advise that anybody that likes mystery or historically set pieces would absolutely love this and should definitely, definitely give it a read. So all in all, good from me. Guys, so thank you so much for watching my first ever video review. It's scary to think I've finally done it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's anything you think I could do differently or could change or could include or take out. I recorded an initial one and that was 15 and a half minutes long, so I've managed to cut it down for this one. Um, but just let me know if there's anything else you think I should change. Um, I should be back with something between now and Christmas. I can't promise the t-shirt will be quite as good as this one, but I'll give it a go. Um, I'm going to do some kind of top five, top ten list between now and Christmas, I would think. And then I'll be back just after that with my end of year awards. But please give me a like down below and thank you again so much for all the support and comments and likes on the first video. And I look forward to hearing what you all have to think about this one. Thanks, guys.